Welcome to the Knowledge for Men show. Your life will never be the same. Your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. I want to die empty of regret. I want to die empty of my best work. We don't understand who we are. Instead, we're living out somebody else's narrative. What one man can do, another man can do. If it's been done, it can be done again. Being yourself and being your truest, most authentic self in every moment. If it scares you or makes you a little afraid, do it. Follow your heart and your gut. The first stage. I think is finding you, like finding out who I am today. Stuff will not work. You will have things that fail. Success is when you're a happy, fulfilled person. How do you define success? It's your life and you are the creator of the movie script that is your life story. Do you ever feel like you're doing the journey alone? Have you ever felt like that you just need someone to talk to, someone who could bring some perspective into your world? Or maybe you're not the type of person who learns from watching video courses or reading books and you just want to talk with someone specifically about your challenges and how to break through them. I want to introduce you to the High Performance Men's Coaching Program. It's an intensive coaching experience designed to unlock a man's full potential in his life, business, and relationships. Over this past year, I've brought together and trained some of the best coaches in the world to help men step up, stop playing small, and become the strongest versions of themselves. Learn more about high-performance men's coaching at kfmcoach.com. Again, that's kfmcoach.com. You are not alone, and we are here to cut through the crap, hold you accountable, and challenge you so that you can make your dreams become a reality. Go to kfmcoach.com to learn more and apply. All right, guys. Welcome to the show. I'm here with Sean Merriman, a three-time Pro Bowl and All Pro selection NFL player. He was a first round draft pick for the San Diego Chargers and was NFL Defense Rookie of the Year. He now has a new athletic apparel brand, Lights Out. You can learn more about that at lightsoutbrand.com. Sean, welcome to the show. Hey, Andrew. Thanks for having me, man. Sean, we start off every show with some sort of success quote or a saying that the guest has lived by that's helped them on their journey. What do you got for us and share with us what that means to you? Uh, you know, one of the biggest things I always tell myself that I keep working and everything else falls in place. You know, I'm not a I'm not a huge luck guy, right? I don't I don't really believe in luck. I believe in you know you work, 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 and then the opportunity comes about, and now you're in a position to accept it or, or for the opportunity to be a good use. But it all comes through work. So you know, just keep working and everything else falls in place. So instead of like reading or trying to sit there and ponder about what to do next you're you're just like let's go let's take action let's move forward yeah because you know i think that most people sit back and try to perfect the perfect plan you know have the best plan possible and they spend so much time trying to create this plan and make sure it's perfect that they never they never get to actually coming out with it you know they never get around to executing the plan and I think that at some point you have to will your way to success. You have to will your way through a, an opportunity. And that all happens through through working and, and actually making it happen. Can you give us an example of a time when you did this? Like you did not have all the information, you didn't have the best plan, maybe didn't have all the right resources, but you willed your way to a success. Yeah, I mean, I've been kind of at this lights out thing for a long time. You know, I was selling lights out T-shirts in, in college uh, on a college campus. In 2005, I ended up buying a name and rights from another company, and it's now everything's just paying off. I mean, obviously, I was an athlete, and my main job was to play football, so I didn't, I couldn't really spend the time I wanted to in building a company because my, you know, I was a football player. That's that's right. what my job was. Right. And what I did in 2005 by going out and securing and buying the right name and the rights from another company is just now coming, you know, coming around. <laughs> you know, so that's what 11, 11 years ago that I just kept working through the process. And now that I can spend now that I'm retired and I can spend all my time on building this company, that's just a prime example of just kind of going through the process, willing your way, and 11 years later, and then boom. Yeah. But what has life been like transitioning out of the NFL in the last few years? You've you've dedicated, <laughs> I'm sure, the majority of your life, you know, not even including just college in the NFL, but even previously high school and all that, to football. And what has life been like transitioning outside of that? Well, you know, I, I'll tell anybody that the first year is always tough, right? Because you've been playing sports your whole entire life, and then one day it's just done. <laughs> right. There's no, you know, you play uh, all the way from Pee Wee League and, and then you go to high school and <laughs> you go to, you know, college and then you go to, to the NFL 
And now one day it's all over. So that first year, I'll, I'll tell anybody, I don't care if you have many things lined up and you got your second career and doing things. Look, I was broadcasting, doing TV shows and movies and everything else. It just still wasn't the same as be coming out of the tunnel for 70 plus thousand because you always have that feeling yeah. that you can get back on the field, that you just you want to be back in the locker room with the guys. So after that first year goes by, then you're saying, OK, yeah, this is, you know, I found my next passion. This is what I want to do. And, and that's what's been great about it. You know, you find something that, you, that equally made you passionate, as I did on the football field, to what I'm doing now. I mean, just like, you know, what I'm doing with Lights Out, I feel the same type of way that I, I did when I was coming out of the tunnel of almost 70,000 people. Yeah, Qualcomm Stadium. Yeah, been a fan. I was just sharing with you from San Diego myself, and it, it's awesome to have you here on the show. So you were known as, you're an all-pro Defensive lineman, you, you crush the football world. I, I would say you, you have stellar results. When I used to think the Chargers was thinking Sean Merriman, was thinking Philip Rivers, was thinking Antonio Gates. Like you're, you're up there with you know at the time that I was watching football. What are you now looking to do? What are your sights on now moving forward? Now I just want to build this company out, and I just had a great partnership with Bellator that we announced last week. The MMA uh, company. The MMA for, company for those yes. Yeah. Yes, MMA Bellator on Spike TV. They had an awesome turnout with Bellator 160 this past Friday in Anaheim. And we announced the partnership on uh, Thursday at the weigh-ins. And when I tell you the response that I've, I've been getting since it came out, it was just like, man, great partnership. You guys want to do great things together. So there'll be a bunch of co-branded material. So wait, so uh, are you fighting or is this a partnership with Lights Out Clothing? This, yes, this is a partnership with Lights Out. Sorry. Okay. This is, yeah, this is, yeah. <laughs> no, Sean's no, no. back Look, in the ring the last, training the last, jiu-jitsu. The, the last thing I want to do is put the fighting thing out there because everybody always assumes I'm going to fight anyway. But uh, <laughs> I do like anyway. I like training with the guys. I'll, I'll, you know, I'm actually going to a, a training camp this week oh, for okay. a day or two to kind of work out with some guys. But no, the partnership is with Lights Out all right, all right. My, my clothing company. So you'll... You know, I have uh, some sponsor fighters here. I'm going to sign a fighter or two coming up here in the next week or so. Get ready for the big fight that's coming up next September 16th, I believe. So I'll have, you know, uh, some cage space where you can see Lights Out brand inside the cage or, or guys walking with Lights Out gear into the ring. But, you know, we have everything from compression and T-shirts and things and sweatshirts, hoodies you put on after you're done working out. And I wanted to create a lifestyle with it, that you have something every facet of your day, whether it's to work out or you're going up the street and uh, getting a cup of coffee. Did you ever see something like this happening when when you were known as the Lights Out guy? I think Lights Out was on like the big TV screen at Qualcomm. And they're like, oh, cool. That's that's what I'm known for here. And, and did you ever see that this was going to turn into your brand that you're going to push forward after playing football? You know, I did, man. And, and I, I would say the biggest thing is I've always seen Lights Out as being kind of bigger than one person. I've always felt that Lights Out was a brand and had much more meaning than just going out and tackling somebody in the field. I mean, I, Lights Out is a word that and name that people just know in general. And I always wanted to turn it into a brand, but I just couldn't, especially early on when I didn't understand the apparel industry and how things work. And uh, I, don't, I didn't have the knowledge that I have now. I just knew I wanted to do something in the apparel space, but how do I make this into a brand? So then I started to branch it out and, and started going to other sports and guys really, you know, just really had that lights out meaning to what they were doing in their sport. And that's when I kind of knew, I said, man, this is, this, this can be huge. And I just had this passion, almost like an obsession for making this brand as big as it possibly can. And I just enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited for what's happening there. How do you deal with that fear of, I, I want to do this, you said, but I don't really know. I, I don't know how all this works. Like I, I've never done something like this. How do you deal with the fear of going into something that you're uncertain about? That, yeah, that's always fear of failure. I don't care what anyone says. And you can be the most confident person in the world. There's always fear of failure. Or is somebody going to like this? Are people going to wear it? Do they, are people going to get behind it? Are people going to support it? Uh, there's always fears, but I don't, I don't let the fears stop me. If anything, you know, I look at it as a challenge. Can I, how big can I make this thing be? And how big can I put a team together that I have support to make it as big as, as big as I want it to be? And I do. I mean, just seeing the announcement and, and what, what came out. I mean, we were trending in the country with the announcement with Bellator. We were trending like number eighth in the country or something like that. But the hashtag of live lights out was like 18 in the world is something ridiculous. <laughs> All right. I, I was extremely excited 
what to see something like that. I mean, just, you know, people love the brand and they support it. They love to wear it. They love the gear. And, and, and it just, it gives me even more ammunition to keep going and keep going and making it bigger and better. Uh, you've been a big success in the NFL, obviously. Do you feel that there's this sort of pressure to maintain that level of success outside of the NFL? No, I've always, like I said, uh, you know, I'll go back to saying it's a challenge because you hear all these stories, right? You hear all these stories about guys and the bankruptcy and, and right. the money and financial problems and things like that, or you're not going to make, you can't, it's almost impossible to make the money that you made playing football. To me, it was always, I always looked at that as, as, as so negative and something that has nothing to do with me and just want to really change the, the, the kind of perception of what that looks like or that's not p- possible. I'm going to show you it's possible to do it because I'm doing it. You know, I'm not in the process of thinking about doing it or trying to come up with this great plan. No, I'm actually doing it right now. And, you know, I just really want to change the perception of uh, about you can't transition into something else and be great at something else. I won't get involved in anything unless I know I can be great in it. Mm, yeah. Just this discussion here brings up I, I was watching a documentary about Allen Iverson, the, the all star NBA player, and it just shows his rise. And then towards the end. If you follow him, obviously not. It's just kind of like a sl- slight downfall in his career where he had made over $200 million playing basketball. And, and today his net worth is just... I know it's all speculation with the internet and all these different websites, but they say it's just about a million dollars or so. Is, is that something that you see, uh, maybe not at that level, but common amongst pro athletes after they retire? You know, I think we hear about it. Right. right. Because it's not a, it's not a good story if a guy doesn't go bankrupt to hear the successes and all that stuff is not going to end up on the, the gossip blogs and papers or anything like that. I just those stories are out there. Then it, it just like trickles down to everybody else, which is not fair. You know, it's almost like, hey, what, there are plenty of athletes out here doing extremely well, but you'll never hear about them. You only hear about the ones that's not doing so well. And and I know Allen Iverson extremely well, and, and I and I know that's you know a little bit kind of a made up story or speculation is not it's not accurate, but yeah you you know you hear about it so because it's true you see it all the time you you see it from you know from guys all the time it's just you never hear about the ones that are out here doing extremely well yeah yeah I think it just creates uh, a lot it gets a lot of media attention when they hear a story like that and I have a lot of respect for Allen Iverson and uh, nothing negative to him in any way or any any sort there. I want to now transition here into the knowledge. I'm just going to ask you some rapid fire questions about just just going deeper and, and pulling out some lessons here for the audience. So are you ready for the knowledge round, Sean? Yep, ready. So you might be wondering, why would I ever invest in a coach? I've never done anything like that before. Well, it's going to shorten your learning curve and save you the time that it would take to achieve your goal. You can avoid making mistakes that you would otherwise make. You'll get more results because everything will be tailored to your specific needs and challenges. The coach will hold you accountable so you can't procrastinate, so you can't be lazy, so you can't say, I didn't have the time. You'll be challenged and pushed harder than you've ever been pushed. You'll have conversations so powerful that you'll feel more energized, alive, and confident and certain about the goals that you have in front of you and where you want to go, most importantly, where you want to be. You'll go farther than you've ever gone before when you have a coach. If you want to learn more about our high-performance men's coaching program, go to kfmcoach.com. Again, that's kfmcoach.com to learn more about our high-performance men's coaching program. You have got to understand that every successful person in the world invests in coaching to go from good to great. And if you're already a high achiever, then how much more could you achieve if you had a high-performance men's coach at your side to push you even further? Go to kfmcoach.com to learn more and apply for our high-performance men's coaching program. Again, that's kfmcoach.com. Welcome to the Knowledge Round, where the guests will be asked rapid-fire questions to give the audience invaluable pieces of wisdom to help transform their lives. Starting in 3, 2, 1, showtime. All right, what advice would you give to someone who's feeling really lost or unsure of what they should be doing or where they're at right now in their life? Just just always know whatever you're going through right now is it, it, going to get better. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. It just you have to always put in back of your mind that you're going to get there. That's going to happen. Just keep going and keep going and keep going because there's always light at the end of the tunnel. And as long as people remember that and know that, then they'll be fine. And now what would you say is really holding men back 
from becoming their strongest self? Like, what do you think is really that thing that's holding men back, most men back, per se? You know, kind of getting out of your own way. You know, I say it all the time that people, especially men, you know, we, we get in our own way and, you know, we have these abilities to do so many different things, but we can't, you know, we, we kind of sabotage ourselves, right? Men sabotage themselves, whether it's pride, whether it's thinking that you know it all or not taking advice because of, you know, we have this manly thing. You don't want anybody to tell you what to do. And sometimes I think that, that we get in our own way of being successful. Do you think the ego is playing a large role here? Or what role does the ego play here, should I say? Uh, yeah, a uh, huge part. Because it, it's almost like you, you don't like to be told what to do. You can't admit mistakes. You can't bring yourself down enough to say, hey, I, I messed up. Or I could have done this better. Or I apologize for doing this. And for that, it, it just never allow us to move forward if you have that type of an attitude. Yeah, I think especially too when you're at the top of your game in whatever craft you're in, it's it's even harder for for you to take feedback or listen to others. Oh yeah, not for sure. Can you name a person who's had a, a large impact on your life, like a mentor? Uh, who would this person be and, and what have they shared with you that's helped you? I would say, you know, my high school coaches, you know, they kind of really took me under their wing and you can almost come out to practice. Like when I was in high school and you would have thought that I was the worst player on the field, right? The way they just always got after me and I was, you know, always push and push and push and never really let my ego or my pride or anything get bigger than than what I was as a person. And so that when when those things are kind of still in you younger, when it counts, when you kind of develop the person who you're going to be, you're kind of the person all the way through because you've you've already experienced the the humble beginnings and you you're not afraid of of work and you're not afraid of just going through the process yeah i I thought it was interesting that you said high school coaches versus let's say college coaches or nfl coaches but it has to do with that you being young and implementing or implanting these invaluable skills to help you push forward yeah i think so because i I think that we reach an age where you're kind of the person who you're going to be and i'm not saying that people can't change but your, your morals and your bases and who you are as a person, I think, gets built younger. And you develop these habits over a long period of time and you just get better from that point on. But once you things are kind of a part of you early on, that's your ground roots. That's right. your basis. Right. And, and that's the person you're going to be growing, growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a reader, Sean? Do you, do you have any books that you recommend that have been influential on your journey? You know, I'm actually reading right now Phil Knight's Shoe Dog. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, his, that's the Nike story. Yeah, the Nike story, and I just love reading. I'm not like I, I don't read anything fiction. I don't read love books. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't I don't read any kind of fantasy kind of things. It's not real. Yeah, you, you, real information. I, I'm I'm a huge person of information and data and getting as much knowledge that's going to benefit something that I'm doing. I love to hearing about people's journeys and industries that I want to go far in. And obviously, Phil Knight being you know the the creator of Nike, that's probably the biggest. Absolutely. Any others? That that's it right now. I only take one book at a time, man. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> and, and most of those most of those books get I, I read them on the plane or I read them somewhere where I'm stationary because I, I'm always like you know doing three four things at one time. But I know if I'm somewhere where I can't move, that's when I whip the book out. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, I was recently on a flight from Boston to San Diego and knocked out. Two books in one city. Never <laughs> could never do that. Really, just sit if I was at my house. So I, right, totally, exactly. Yeah, I get it. Now this next this is a scenario here for you. So imagine Sean that you could sit down with your twenty year old self if you can envision where he's at personally, professionally, relationships, financially, just where he's at in his life, and you could sit down with him for sixty seconds. What would you tell twenty year old Sean to do, and what would you tell him not to do? I was coming from where I come from. That when that you know I grew up in. in very tough situations and tough background, bad neighborhoods. And so it, it kind of created this thing where you had to really be kind of protective of yourself and you had to be kind of closed off and watching your back and things like that. So I, I would say that I, I would be a little bit more open. I can say when I was younger, I wasn't as open as just how I was brought up and, and, and how I grew up in, in those situations kind of molded me to be very protective and have a guard up. And uh, if I if I can go back and talk to my younger self, it would be that you know just to be op- a little bit more open to people and ideas and, and not so much guarded off because of how I grew up. 
Mm. So you were close to like relationships or, or new ideas, new ways of thinking or just uh, different types of people. Uh, if you could elaborate on that. Yeah, just all, all the above. I mean, you yeah. know, okay. if you're living in a situation where, you know, I've, I've lived in shelters, I've, I've, I've okay. stayed and slept in cars growing up and you had to kind of fend for yourself at all times. You're very protective of people coming around and certain people who to have around or not, you know, open to working with anybody, open to friendships. I mean, everything. You're, you're just, you're kind of blocked off in this wall because of how you grew up. So it's everybody's kind of at an arm's distance to begin with, right? So if I could go back and change that, I would kind of look to myself and say, hey, you know, just be a little bit more open-minded about things. I like that. And and that really just caught my attention. You said, you know, slept in cars, sleeping outside. When I just introduced you, do you ever just, when I'm like, hey, three-time Pro Bowl player, all-pro selection NFL player, defense rookie of the year, first round draft pick. When you hear that, do you ever just look, think back and be like, damn, like I did that. And coming from sleeping in cars and and in a tough situation like that, where the odds are, they're not in your favor at all. You know what, to be honest, no, I don't look back very much at all. I I will one day think that I'll sit down one day when everything kind of slows down for me and, you know, look at, you know, the accomplishments and look at where I came from and look how far I've, I've gone and I'm always about the next thing and always look so much, so far, so much further in the future that it's even, it's hard for me to even look back at, you know, those Pro Bowls and all pros and things. And, I, and, and <laughs> yeah. don't get me wrong, they're great accomplishments. You know, I, I look, I look back at some of the guys I've, I've played with. I mean, I yeah. played with Damian Thompson. Yeah. I played with yeah. Philip Rivers and Antonio Gates and Renzo Neal. I mean, I'm, you know, all pro players and Hall of Fame players that I've got a chance to be in a locker room with every day. And I wasn't on a team of superstars. I was also one of one of the superstars, one of the big players. And I look back at it now, like, damn, you know, I can compare it to the Damian Thompson. That's crazy. You know, <laughs> when they talk about teams, yeah. you know, I get mentioned with the, with these guys. So, you know, I, yeah, I do I do have that kind of moment where I, where I look back and say, man, that was a huge accomplishment. But I, I'm not done. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, for me, for me, everything is just starting all over again. And because of my willingness to hit the ground and put my boots on again and start and build everything back up in another industry is how it's how you succeed. You know, yeah. you gotta get back at it and, yeah. and not look back at accolades and, right. and say, oh, hey, I got enough money. I don't really have to work like that. Like, no. <laughs> like I absolutely do have to work. And you I work like I don't have any money at all. Because that's the type of, you know, what I put behind it when I get involved in something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really putting all this in. It's just like you're it's just another chapter. You're still going. Same guy going to make big things happen. I mean, early 30s here, massive. You know, so much, so much time here to 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 just e- go even further and and make e- even just the football just one chapter. But the whole business world that you're going into, for someone who's in a tough situation right now, someone who's listening here, you've been in some tough times. Uh, we all have. And what advice would you have for someone who's really in that tough situation, has a dream, but just doesn't see that they can actually make it happen? Take one step at a time. I think that some people look so far at the end goal, right? And, and look so far in the future, they forget those baby steps to get there. You know, I've, I've come up the product and stuff now and people will automatically say, oh man, look, man, you, you can compete with Under Armour. You can compete with Nike. I say, ho, 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 ho. Like, <laughs> Slow, like slow down first. Let's get established. Let's get you know get it out there, and let's you know bust our tails to to, to work and, and make this a very well known brand that people love. Before you even start looking to even compete with the, with the big dog, and I think that so many people forget the little steps you have to do every day in order to get to their end goal. I think that's huge. Yeah, you compare yourself to Nike. Then you have a bad month and it's like, oh, and then you're comparing yourself. Why not compare yourself to where you were last month, last year? Right. Exactly. And that's, and that is my motto. I, everything is, is about these building blocks. In order to get this big, nice house and stuff like that, you have to take each brick and lay it down and each brick and lay it down to the house is done. You know, if you're going through a tough situation and then you turn around and you leave and you come back and say, oh, my house is not done. I'm going through a bad time. You know, no, you, you forgot to lay that one brick down and you're already looking at this big, pretty house. And, and, and then, you, you know, you're not concentrating on this one brick that you have to lay down. So anybody yeah, going through a tough time, just know that that brick has to be laid. Yeah, we've got to come back to our reality, 
stay present, lay one brick down at a time and slowly build that house. And it could be so tough sometimes when we have in this world of social media and we're comparing ourselves to all these other people who are posting all these pictures of them traveling. They're, everyone seems to always be on vacation on social media and <laughs> just just living large and, and you're still trying to put that break down. It can be tough, but I think we've got to just be present and stick to what we got right here, right in front of us today. Yeah, no, for, absolutely. And and you're right. I, I was just telling somebody the other day, I see the social media people on vacation all the time and every weekend and this place and this place here. And I'm like, man, I mean, is there any work in between? Like, what, yeah. what, what, what happened to the, what happened to the work? It's like a you Tuesday know? afternoon. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, and I, and I, and I have my office now and I, I go yeah. shoot shows. I just yeah. shot a great comedy series uh, show last week with George Lopez, Cedric the Entertainer. Mm, nice. Uh, nice. Eddie Griffin. Great. And, I, and it, to me, everything is about a process and work. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll slip the vacation in there if I can, but if I can't, it, it just, it won't happen. Yeah, I was, so funny, I was just telling a good friend of mine last week about that and just the vacations and, I, you know, you turn on social media and it's like, man, I, I don't even know what that beach is. Like, what color of sand is that? <laughs> but, you know, it's not that I can't go, it's just these priorities in my life and where I'm trying to go, it, that that's, you know, that's not a priority to me. Yeah, yeah. This has been fantastic, Sean. Uh, that concludes the knowledge round here. What What's really exciting you now today? What's getting you out of bed in the morning? Uh, just these opportunities, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you, you know, you make a, a partnership with a, a league like Bellator that's on Spike TV. I mean, that's to me, it's that gets my blood hot, man. Every morning, I say, "Well, okay, what what else can we do? How how can we make this bigger?" That's what's on my mind every time I roll out of bed in the morning. I get up, you know, six six thirty. I hit the gym, and I'm always constantly thinking, "How can whatever I'm doing at that moment, how can I make it bigger?" That's what gets me up in the morning. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm looking at, looking forward to seeing the success and growth of your brand, uh, Lights Out. For all the followers, all the listeners, you can learn more about this at lightsoutbrand.com. And then also just Google Sean Merriman. All his social media things, they, they plug... I mean, there's so many that, that you got here, Sean, but <laughs> the Twitter and uh, Instagram, just Sean Merriman. You can check those out and follow up with all the great things that Sean's doing. It's It's been an honor here having you here on the show, Sean. No, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I got to come back sometime, so... Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Next time we, we have uh, our, our next uh, episode, it'll be, we'll have all this massive success to share. I'm really excited for that. Sean, thank you so much for being on the show, sharing your story, lessons here, being vulnerable. You've impacted thousands of men today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Knowledge for Men podcast. Hundreds of interviews and millions of downloads later, we're continuing to build an international movement and we're just getting started. So if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and leave a helpful review in iTunes because it really helps the podcast grow so we can impact even more men in the world who need this. Guys, this is all about living with purpose, where every day you only do things that matter to you. You wake up, live with purpose, and take massive action towards the life you want. And always remember, love the life you have while creating the life of your dreams. Go to kfmfree.com to get a surprise bonus I've made for my listeners. Again, that's kfmfree.com for something that's changed my life and I'm offering it to you for free. Also, check out my Amazon best-selling books that I've written for you to help you crush life at kfmauthor.com. Again, that's kfmauthor.com to see all the books I've created to help you break through in life. This is your host, Andrew Farabee, founder of knowledgeformen.com, and I'll see you in the next episode.